Hello good people. After years of being on this channel, I've decided it is now my duty to expose Fractured Moon for what it really is. I'm here today to tell you good people what exactly happens when we stop rolling our footage and we actually have to communicate with each other like regular people. And my story begins with two men and the one who calls himself the Comic Con King. How do I look? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. <laughs> Why am I here again? Oh, that's right. That bitch John wants me to talk about some events between me and Steve, don't he? Well, I got one thing to say about Steve and fucking Clack. He's trying to get me kicked off the channel because he's scared of me. So, me and Harry have been doing this channel for about four years now. To be honest, I never actually asked him to join the channel. He just sort of happened to be there. However, lately, I swear he's trying to get me kicked off the channel. There was always tension between the two of them. I noticed that more and more, especially uh, as I got more and more involved with the channel. And how, at times, it even spread to me. One of the main things was when I brought up Harry's voice. Well, his real voice. I think he's a little bit self-conscious about it. Don't get me started on Harry's real voice. I cannot stand it. It sounds like he's just making a shitty accent. I mean, he's not English. Or even British. He's American. The bloody yank. Yeah, this is my real voice. What's the problem? I'm goddamn sick of talking all nice like, drop a like, leave a comment. Yeah, I'm damn sick of it. So yeah, I'm talking like this. Ain't that right, girl? Yeah, it is. Steve once told me a story that he vetted Harry's voice to multiple different people. Uh, and they hated it that much. Uh, they filed multiple noise complaints just to prove a point. It was such a hassle dealing with all those noise complaints. It cost me a lot of money to get them off my back. However, at least now I'm financially stable, unlike him. At least I have a decent job. He just sits around and makes me spend all my hard-earned cash. Both of them are constantly arguing about money because they both think they're the leader of the channel. They keep throwing money at things and it just, how do I put it, it just doesn't stick. Like the other day, they both just bought a green screen, but neither of them know the other one's bought it. What? That bitch Steve bought a green screen too? And it's bigger than mine? God damn it! I will never financially recover from this. As you can imagine, we, because we go to Comic Cons quite a lot, uh, cosplay is another thing that they both argue about. However, one major problem is that Steve builds all his cosplays, or at least the larger parts of them, where Harry not so much. Oh, so let me think. I've made all of Jean's armour and his weapons from scratch. I've made more or less all of my God of Darkness and Green Pool. I've customised almost all of my Doctor Who black. In fact, I don't think there's actually a cosplay where I haven't customised or made a single part of it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes, Harry does build things, and it is pretty good. However, he does believe that Steve has other people do everything for him and uses the makes videos as a front uh, so people don't catch on to his bullshit lies. I'm gonna be honest with you. No, I don't make much for my cosplays, but at least I actually give a shit about the stuff I make. I don't go around lying to people about how I make most of my stuff. What Steve won't tell you is, is that he actually pays somebody to do the makes for him. Crazy, I know, but let me tell you this. Have you ever wondered why you barely see his face in any of the makes videos? I mean, because Harry isn't the greatest at making things, he compensates from that by doing method acting with his cosplays. This can be really good when he's doing things such as Ryu, Ji, Yang, or especially Neil, because we don't have to hear his stupid voice. But then, there was the time, uh, oh boy, the time that he cosplayed Raven. Jesus Christ, what was he thinking? That was the worst decision he's ever made. 
I've never actually talked about this in the public before, but there was an incident at the con where I was cosplaying Raven. And the best way to phrase it is that he probably could have got banned from all cons. How he didn't get arrested, I will never know. Yeah, I like to get into the mindset of my characters. And no, I'm not an actor or anything, but acting like the character is kind of half the cosplay experience. Here's a quote I like to say. People only care about the cosplays that they know. So if I make people believe, even for one second, that I am that character, then that's good enough for me. Did he just say that dumb quote of his? <laughs> of course he did. Uh, I mean, it's alright to act a little bit different in cosplay, but that definitely doesn't mean you can threaten to kill someone. I didn't do that. Did Steve tell you that? He did? Well, let me tell you the truth instead of listening to some idiot tell you a bunch of crap. I was joking around with the guy making some dark jokes, and then I just happened to say if I was going to kill somebody, I wouldn't do it here. I would do it in their hotel room after the con. And this bitch went and thought I was talking about him. So he goes and puts a goddamn post on Facebook saying about how he's scared of his current situation and other random crap like he can't sleep. So we go to the con the next day, not having seen this post by chance, uh, and we run into a, a group of people. And these people are all looking for the person who threatened a person's life. And Harry got quite emotional with that and even offered to join in himself. Uh, then they realised he was talking about him. And lo and behold, they almost described him to a T. He got so shit up about it, he was messaging me at the night, like midnight. He was that worried about it. Um, and then he asked me to be a middleman between him and the guy. Um, of course I did. I mean, even Netflix can't produce this much drama. But the guy in question had actually forgotten about the whole thing saying he had no idea the post even caused that big a reaction. The whole thing blo uh, quickly blew over after that, but not after Harry secretly thought Steve set the entire thing up just to spite him off the channel. Think about it. If I got banned from cons, or even stopped going to the bigger ones, who do you think could take over? That's right, Stephen Clark. Damn that bitch! I swear, he's even using the conflicts to find my replacement. Think about it. Why do you think Jordan don't have a teammate? Oh, well that does explain a lot. But anyway, the entire thing got incredibly out of hand. They refused to speak to each other. They refused to meet up with each other. Hey, at one point it got that bad. Harry refused to meet up with me. Because he thought I'd invite Steve along as well. And the worst of it was they refused to film with each other. I've always enjoyed making videos. Hell, I've even enjoyed making videos with him. Especially back in the olden days of the channel. But it's been hard ever since he started to refuse to make videos with me. Things had been way too convenient back then. Especially when you think about it from Steve's angle. Things I'd done for years had suddenly turned against me. And I was public enemy number one for a while. Now Jordan, you know, the guy running this whole crap. He wouldn't have done that simply because he ain't smart enough. But Steve, man, he's devious and he's always keeping stuff from me. So he could have easily done something like that. So I kept my distance for a while. It really started to impact the video schedule. Okay, we don't make spreadsheets or anything like some other channels. But we like to know who's doing what videos and when they're coming out. But with Harry even refusing to start editing videos with me in it, it makes it really random and unpredictable. Let me tell you this, I would sooner shoot you than some quality content. This whole situation just got out of hand. I mean, any time anything went wrong, uh, Harry would blame it instantly on Steve, refuse to film with him, and then that would just stop everything in the channel. Because we just couldn't make anything. It, it really got ridiculous. And to be fair, it got to a point where even I was on Steve's side. But there was one time that Harry did have a point, and that's uh, when Steve killed his dog. Oh boy, I finally got proof that Steve was up to some shady shit. 
You know that stuff's why he always has? Yeah, that thing used to be alive until Steve got his grubby paws all over it. <laughs> Dumb bitch probably thought he was going to turn into John Wick. I don't know how the hell Harry found this animal, but there were traces of blood in Steve's back garden. As Doctor mentioned the fact that Steve's dog weirdly went missing around the time that his wife appeared. As Harry said, and it's the only good point he's ever probably had, the only person who actually gains from this is Steve. I may seem like I'm up to some shady shit, but at least I'm honest with people, and I care about my animals. I don't go around killing them, turn them into damn cosplay props. I don't know what you're talking about. I have or never would hurt an animal. Would as why? Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Just want to let you know that everything in this video is purely fictional. Drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe's always appreciated. And if this video does well, well, we may consider a second episode. Thank you so much, this is Harry Exotic, signing off. See you next time, guys.